one to the checkup. Baby, let me know what's up. Ooh, it's the Chris with the next. Hey, don't worry about the next. It's your boy, Chris with the next, with another episode of the X Zone. All right, so I want to talk about this whole COVID-19 vaccine situation. But before I do that, please uh, donate, subscribe, like, share, comment. Um, If you want to donate to me, my cash app is a dollar sign, get X money on I. And my Venmo is on the edge of rich. Just spell it like that, on the edge of rich. The E is not shared. So just put put on the edge of rich. Like on the edge of glory, just put on the edge of rich. Please, please, please um, donate. If you want to keep this show going, you want to keep hearing the sound of my voice. I mean, you're going to hear it anyway, whether you donate or not. But, you know, this is Christmas. This is trying times, you know. I got a plant bill to pay off. It's $115. You know, so whatever you can donate, donate. Um, I got other people to help out. You know, so please donate. Yes, um, so donate whatever you can. You know, support the show. You know, I'm a local artist, growing artist. And, um, shoot, I could have got a free Christmas tree uh, this year by doing the show. But, um, I got shaded saying I got to do, uh, Consistency is key. You know, so you know what? Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Consistency is key. I don't care if this show gets three views, three likes, whatever. Consistency is key. You're going to get tired of hearing the sound of my voice. But um, yes, please donate. Um, shout outs to Floyd Decor. Great artist. He got a new great song. Shout out to Lisa Orr. He got a new video coming out. You know, support local artists, support growing artists. And um, shout out to my boy, Grizzy, from Lockdown 23 and 1. He is still in the pen. Uh, like I said, weed is not legal in Virginia. So if you want to write him, go to smart jail, smartjailmail.com. Put in uh, Justin Beasley, B E. S L Y and his number is three four two two one and yes if you want to donate to him you can just donate to me and I can give him the money. So my Venmo is on the edge of rich and my cash app is dollar sign get X money oh nine Al <laughs> I'm a Cardi B tip. <clears throat> Anyway, so get into the whole COVID-19 situation where we have to get the vaccine um, as black people, as our black history. Black history is American history. And we've always been test dummies for a lot of things. Like the Tuskegee Airmen had uh, got injected with syphilis, but they was told they was getting the vaccine for syphilis. Yes, when you do your research, do your history, do your research. It's always important to learn. It's never boring to learn. Because I, I grew up in a damn, um, you know, the, from the streets, you know. In L.A., you know, you get the worst the worst teachers. And sometimes you do get good teachers that will teach you some stuff. So, you know, with me learning stuff after I got out of, I couldn't tell you what I learned after um, I got out of grade school, which is a, uh, well, I, grade school is uh, pre-K through 12. So after the fifth grade, after I left elementary, I can't tell you what I learned. It was all a bunch of, you know, mumbo jumbo, you know, books written up on books from probably the 60s and 70s, you know, with a lot of drawing on it. You know, we don't get uh, new books in the hood. That's why a lot of teachers will not let you write on them because that book has to last all the way from 20 years, 30 years, you know. We don't get updated stuff. So it's always good to um, do research, learn. They're not going to teach a lot of stuff, especially about black history, because they don't want you to know all the um, evil stuff that we had to go through. And that's why I try to tell a lot of Latinos that's woke, a lot of people that's woke, because America does not have no real culture. 
everything is stolen and commodified. Shout out to my girl Lovely T. And shout out uh, to uh, the, the lady, the Native American, who um, went on her show. You know, sometimes it's feel like you know so much information and you have to be like quiet about it. You know, some stuff you can just tell people. And some people get it, some people don't. And, you know, I'm going to use the sound of my voice and my knowledge to help others. Just like um, wigs and weaves did not start with black people. Uh, wigs was always created um, since the dawn of time. They said Cleopatra wore one. But in the Victorian era, you had a lot of people that wore uh, wigs and weaves. And I believe that's why they scalped the Indians, so they could make human hair uh, wigs. Wigs for, um, you know, because you had a lot of wig makers back in the Victorian era. And, and Marie, Marie Antoinette, who was known as like the flyest bitch on the block, not to be messed up. But um, back in her era, she used to wear like really big, extravagant wigs. If she was still alive today, she could go to Atlanta, Georgia and be in the hair shows. That's how fly her wigs was. And then she had them big dresses. Oh, yeah, they chopped my bitch head off just for being fly. She got in debt. But if she was living today, she could just get loans and anything. Or she could be on Instagram showing her booty. But back then, it was just different times. And... um as black people, I think we just, you know, had to assimilate it. I guess specifically black women just assimilated. And just like the word nigger, you know, we just turned it in the 60s, you know. You know we just turned it to nigger. And P Richard Pryor was one of the first uh, black folks to use, you know, the N-word on a TV. And so just like with wigs, it was like, ooh, shit, bitch, let me get a red wig. Ooh, shit, bitch, let me get a, a fly lace front. That's why we know for wigs and weaves. Just throwing a little information out there for you. <laughs> but um, going back to the um, COVID-19 situation, um, in the 90s, like they said, um, if you do your research about AIDS too, not a natural disease. Because as like after slavery, we was deemed nuisance, a burden, you know, we was useless. But still, after that, you know, that we still got stuff stolen from us. We try to make our own way, try to grow our own stuff, you know, got kicked out of houses, you know, burned, shot down, beat, raped, you name it. That's 400 years, even after slavery. And, you know, slavery, because after slavery, slavery really never ended. It's just commodified in different ways because um, Thomas Jefferson was the, the end all be all of course he got popped but he was the end all be all because he was the president and illegal slavery ended so you can't steal somebody from their country and then you just you know bring them over here and use them and beat them and rape them and all that so that's illegal slavery ended and it says in the constitution all forms of slavery is illegal except when you go to the institution of crime and we all know that jail and prison that's the institution of crime. It ain't no institution. Now, if you do the crime, you do the time. But, of course, in America, and this is not an anti-American uh, video, uh, uh, podcast, you know, but we do have a, our issues in America. So I'm African-American, so I'm going to talk about our issues. Yeah, and our issue is that sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you can, get, can go to jail for, for fitting a description. Or you can go to jail for 20 years for smoking some weed. The thing about it is, with weed, see, a lot of things, a lot of, there's a lot of commercialism here. Every group, every tribe, every sexual orientation, everybody knows that they, there's a lot of commercialism. And, um, you know, just like with the LGBT people, you know, in the 90s, it was like, ooh. And then you just had, like, RuPaul out. Or only one person, you know, one person at a time can come out. Like Ellen DeGeneres, when she came out, she got blacklisted for three years. Because already Rosie O'Donnell was out. But then when Ellen DeGeneres came out, they wanted her to be America's sweetheart, sort of like a Julia Roberts. And they already had, like, roles lined up for her. And I guess she messed it up. But she bounced back after three years, and it was like, whatever. But now it's just like, uh, rainbow everything, rainbow soup. Rainbow pancakes, 
And a lot of the LGBT people is like, uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't eat no rainbow soup, no rainbow spaghetti. It ain't that serious. I mean, it's serious, but it ain't that serious. So that's commercialism. It, it just for a little tea for y'all. Shout out to Lovely Tea. And, um, so going back to what I was saying about slavery, um, I mean, not slavery, but with weed. I guess weed is sellable now, so it's just like a hot commodity. Like I was saying about uh, Grizzly from Lockdown 23 and Run. Shout out to uh, Jonathan Death's channel. Go check him out on YouTube. And uh, you could type out, type in Lockdown 23 and Run and t- type Grizzly, and you'll see who I'm talking about. But, you know, weed is now commercialized because when niggas was on the block in the 90s smoking weed drinking uh gin and juice and eating a twinkie it was illegal and they went to jail for 20 years but then all of a sudden when some of these white folks start to um when they start to sell and now what i was seeing on la's look that show that comes on after snl la's first look i saw them they had a, a, a wine tasting no it wasn't wine tasting it was a um refinery where they smoke weed because they call them herbs because it is herbs so they're smoking weed you get to eat fish and drink some wine on the side that was the same thing the niggas was doing on the block and they got arrested for it so everybody that's in jail that went to jail for selling weed should get out and i believe that firmly and they should come in with their own you know gin and juice bar so that's the exact same thing they was doing on the block but now it's about commercialism. Just like in the 90s when we was growing up. And we had those drug ad commercials. But this is your brain. And the woman would have a pan. And then she would smack an egg on the pan. And this is your brain on drugs. And then we had, um, the one I remember is uh, Crackhead Bob from a Howard Stern show. Before he got, um, before he became Crackhead Bob on a Howard Stern show... He was on um, that drug ad council commercial. And you could look it up on YouTube. And he could barely say his ABCs. He would say, A, B, C, D, E, F. A grown man couldn't even say his own ABCs. Because that drugs, the drugs created a chemical imbalance in his mind. Sort of like that uh, girl from uh, the LL Cool J show from the 90s in the house. Uh, Mia Campbell, you know, it creates a drug, uh, chemical imbalance for some people that's using these hardcore drugs. Um, I know a person from Elac Theater, I'm not going to say their names, but yeah, I've, I've, I've seen it in person too. And so, um, yeah, Crackhead Bob, then I remember there was another commercial where a girl was spinning around in circles and she got dizzy, some black girl. Yeah, and, but now, fast forward, we got all these rappers rapping about drugs and, you know, hardcore drugs and alcohol and, you know, Molly and just, I don't even really listen to none of these new rappers, but I see them on the Instagram. I see them on, you know, maybe websites like Hollywood Unlocked and stuff. They be having big Molly cakes and, and all of this uh, lean and all of that. And it's just like, when did it become cool to sell drugs? I'm trying to figure out. Or when did it become cool to be a hoe? Everything's sounding the same. I'm not saying you can't be sexual, but I just feel like everything is just hoe culture now. Yeah, and we can't blame my girl Lil' Kim and Foxy Brown for that. Um, but like I said, Lil' Kim is an individual. Foxy Brown, they're individuals. But just like the corporates, the record labels, when they get their hands on the formula, then that's how everybody has to be. And there has been no real change since then. A uh, young MA, um, I guess, was a change. But again, she's a lesbian. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but that isn't really too much of a difference. Uh, people I like to listen to that's underground Amber London. Shout out to Amber London, the rapper, and uh, other people like that. But um, a lot of these rappers nowadays. I saw some chick, she was um, copying Nicki Minaj's Anaconda with a little bit of WAP, some video. 
it, it was something. It was just all generic now. All sounding the same. Nobody really pinning nothing no more. You have everything to uh, going to a beat, and then they just rapping some, you know, some stupid lyrics. Mumble rap. I hate mumble rap. If I can't hear what you're saying, I don't need to uh, listen to you. Because I know when I hit puberty, you know how you can say stuff under your breath? But once I hit puberty, my voice started sounding like this. So I would say stuff and people would be like, what? What? And speak up. So mumble rap is not for me. You know, it took me a long time to even, you know, learn how to uh, train and trick my voice. Just like a lot of people that uh, have accents and, you know, they have to kind of like change their voice. So then too, mumble rap back in the day, you know, you would have got laughed off the stage with that. Because being a rapper nowadays is not being a rapper back then. Back then, you know, you had to start underground. Then you had to do rap battles, sort of like Eminem from 8 Mile, just to give you a, a visual picture. And then once you got enough money from that, once they, you was deemed the best by the hood, then you created a demo. Then when you created a demo, you had to run the streets of Hollywood or wherever you're from to get people to fuck with you. Then after that, once you got a record label, a record, then you had to go in front of the board before you got signed and rap in front of 20 people just to see if you're a viable product if they want to spend all their money on you. So, a lot of things, when they lowered the bar for stuff, they lowered the bar in a very bad way because we don't have people pinning anything anymore. It's starting to show. And a lot of the stuff is being, you know, infiltrated probably by the government because it's just like I feel like we're going back into the 90s whole shooting um, gangster rap because when they got their hands on gangster rap then it's when it became pop pop bang bang and even Crazy Bone uh, from Bone Thugs Harmony that's why he got out the industry because he said that they got an open letter open secret letter saying that everybody from that record label saying that if you rap about anything political anymore, that you will be terminated. Everything has to be about violence, sex, because sex sells violence and death. You know, get into a violent, you know, violence, like get into it. Like, what you going to do to the person if they do something to you? Like, what you going to do? And this is how a lot of people got ushered to the graveyard or ushered into jail. So, you know, that's just, you know, me rambling on about, you know, history with black history, history, and, and real things in general. But as for the vaccine, um, going back to AIDS, no, we won't be taking it. As black people, we shouldn't take it. Anybody shouldn't really be taking it. Am I a medical doctor? No. Am I saying anybody of color is not is going to go out and do it? Yeah, they're probably going to go do it. But in general, that's just my take on it. I'm just not going to trust it. We know it has COVID in there. Uh, history always has a re way of repeating itself. If we don't know our history, we won't know our. Uh, we won't really know where we're going to. Of course, the future is different, but when you live in in America, which is a great, you know, country, but we have our own problems. You know, everything has a way of repeating itself. And that COVID, yeah, we're not doing that. And then I heard they're trying to bribe people uh, $250 to take it. Um, so why are you bribing people to take it? They're supposed to help us. Yeah, no. Big farming. Uh-uh. No. Not doing it. I mean, you can call me a conspiracy theorist all you want. Like I said, do your history. Do your research. You know, you don't have to take my word for it. Just do your research. A lot of people got smartphones and it's dumb as hell. They're already talking about 2021. It's going to be a second wave. It's like, oh my God. You know, it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better. But, um, yeah, keep your prayers up. Actually know the words of the Bible and read the Bible. And I'm not talking about white Jesus. I'm talking about the actual Bible. Not that idol. You know, you actually know prayers. And don't just be praying to God for um, things. I mean, you can do that, but also pray for him for life. You know, that's my vaccine. And um, because you, you can't pray to God if you're racist. 
Like, oh, you know, I pray to God, but I know I hate black people. I don't hate Mexicans or I hate anybody. You can't do that. You don't know the word of the Lord. I've seen, I see people do all types of stupid crap using God. You can't use them for that. But anyways, that's my two cents. Um, anything else you want me to talk about? I'll be doing a lot more videos, staying consistent. Because consistency is key. And don't let anybody take you off your rocker, off your platform. Now let's keep moving to the top. Don't be controlled by the past, people, or memories. You know, like Madonna said in Holiday, forget about the bad times, remember the good times. Remember the good times, forget about the bad times. If we treat it like life like a holiday, it will be so right. You know, if you got um, some fake niggas you need to sh shake like a cheesy pizza, do that. You know, family members, you got to exile, you know, do that. You know, like uh, Yana Vincent said, you know, I'm not punishing you. I'm just protecting me. Always protect yourself. Always, you know, God first, love yourself, and then love others. And that's the order it's supposed to come in. Like Janet Jackson said in the movie, um, Why Did I Get Married? At the end, she said that. So, yes, the consistency is key. You'll be seeing a lot more of me. Of course, online. Of course, um, doing these podcasts. Whatever comes to mind. Like I said, I'll be doing more videos about, um, once I get my situation and stuff situated. Um, doing videos. And just doing more stuff. Uh, shouting out people. Doing, uh, like music has never been heard of before. Artists like good music, good high vibration music, stuff that artists you probably never heard of in the 90s. Now, there's a lot of good talent. Some, you know, probably didn't have a big push. Some probably still here, some probably still gone. But the stuff that I just listened to on my iPod. Uh, so, the reason why I say um, donate to the Cash app, because I will be taking off the uh, listener support where you can subscribe for four ninety nine a month, nine ninety nine a month. I'll take it off because I can't play music with uh, having in the background and having that on. So the cash app is just better, anyways. You know, if you want to, you don't really need to subscribe, but you can subscribe. But just hit the cash app better. Just donate like that. So my cash app is dollar sign get x money oh nine, and my Venmo is on the edge of rich. Until then, this has been your boy Chris with the X with another episode of the X Zone. Peace.